Scott is. Excellent stuff. Dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty McClure, of course, just saying hi. Friday night pop up. Hope you're all well. And of course, it's just that time of the week when we say hi to every single one of you. To inform, to educate, and to entertain. You can't beat that, can you? Aaron Kelly, Susan Copeland, and Ian Dickey. Dinky do. Welcome to Scotty McClure's Friday pop up just for you. And of course, it's marvellous to have you all with us. I thank you. Excellent stuff. Stuart Mills there. Wonderful. Kenneth Bryan, Murray Brown. What a wonderful name, Kenneth Bryan, Murray Brown. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you got the information that we were going live at eight o'clock sharp. Always lovely to have you with us, of course. And a very good Friday evening. Dinky do, mate. A Mr. Weekend Shows, says John O'Rourke. Thank you, John. Lovely to have you with us. And a very very warm welcome. I'm just getting us all together here for a Friday night for a wee chit-chat and find out what is what. Ian Kerr, Kermit McCusker and John Cameron. Dinky-do and a warm welcome now. Did it help? Uh, there's Giancarlo Rossi. Giancarlo Rossi. And I say, Dinky-do, Scotty. I say, Dinky-do, Giancarlo Rossi. Lovely to have you with us and a very warm welcome of course. Excellent stuff. I'm so glad that you're all there. And of course, tip everybody the wink. Let everybody know you're looking dapper, Mr. Scotty McClure. Ah, John Cameron. It's a mark of respect for who I'm popping up in front of. Kareem Sakaraya, welcome. Hello, Scotty. It's been a very long time. Hope all's well from Colorado. Kaliana de Armin. Kaliana Diarmin, welcome from Colorado. So, evening, Scotty. Evening. Hello, Scotty McClure. Hope you're well. Says Karim Sakaraya. Absolutely. And welcome to our Friday night pop up, Karim. We'll tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 and let everybody know that we are live. Andy McCrory is watching. Andy, I wondered if you wanted to come on for a wee chat, because I believe we could probably do that. Michael Paul McVeigh, good evening. Scotty McClure, good evening to you, Michael Paul McVeigh. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky-do, I say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the sharing already so that everybody knows that we are actually sharing. So they are wonderful stuff. And, uh, of course, if you could all do the same. Evening to you, Scotty. I loved your late night discussion show on the old Scott FM. Ian Dickey, that was the way to go for radio, wasn't it? It made me laugh. It was actually very tragic, but it made me laugh when people said, oh, no, 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 we don't want that. And, of course, the poor old station died. Uh, your tie needs a double Windsor says John Cameron. No, no, no. We do the single, the double Windsor. That's an older-fashioned thing, John Cameron. And as you know, Scotty McClure is always right at the forefront of mega fashion. Excellent. Always before my time. Peter Dale Nevins, come and join us. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Do, just doing a little bit of sharing there to let everybody know that we are actually here. Um, did any of you see the fact that had popped up that we were live at 8 p.m. tonight? I don't know if anybody noticed that. Do let me know if you noticed it, because I always like to know just how much is getting shared around. Now, the reason I've popped up at this time of night is because I did take a poll. We did three shows this week. And um, we took a poll on them. So we did Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Tuesday was 8 till 9. Wednesday was 7 till 8. And Thursday was 6 till 7. And I did ask, and everybody said, oh, yes, if you make it 8 o'clock, Scotty, that's the best time. So I hope this works out. I'll check with you at the end if you thought to yourself, no, no, that is the right time. There's no there's no doubt about that. James McDonald's watching. Claire Louise Rennick. Hi, Scotty. Hello, Claire Louise. I hope you are well. And thank you for coming and joining us on Scotty McClure's Friday Night Pop-Up Just For You Dinky Do. Good evening, Scotty. You're looking dapper, my friend, says John Boyle. Thank you, John Boyle. I know you're always dapper yourself. Is that a stain on your collar? I don't think so, John. No, no. It'll be a feature of the shut 
individually tailor-made shirts, you see. So it'll be a feature. There won't be any stains on the collar. So there you go. Just your imagination. Fiona McRae, uh, Claire Louise Rennick says, Great thanks. Good. I'm very pleased to hear it shared, Scotty McClure. And yes, uh, I did see it was on at eight. Yes, I noticed, Karim Sakaraya, you are very, very good at acknowledging these things. And I hope everybody sets their notifications for Scotty McClure at eight o'clock sharp. Very, very important. I'm just going to keep sharing just to let everybody know that we are actually live. Yes, wonderful stuff. So, um, Michael Paul McVeigh, you're looking very dapper. Are we out on the town? Well, yes, we can be out on the town. We can be anything you like. Michael Paul McVeigh. So there you are. There's a lot of flexibility there, I say. Wonderful to know. I'm just going to let everybody know. And uh, as I say, if you can all do the same, dinky do. Um, Kevin Roberts is watching. Come and join us, Kevin. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky do. I'm just going to see if I can get this one shared. Then I shall give you my undivided attention. Welcome. Excellent. Uh, I never said there was a stain, Scotty. Would not do that. So what did you say? It wasn't you, John Boyle. It was um, the other chap. The other chap. You didn't say there was a stain. No. Shared. 25, says John Boyle. Excellent, John. Fantastic. Andy Simpson's watching. Come and join us, Andy. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo from me, Scotty McClure, on our pop-up for tonight. El Salvador Stallione Saviour. Scotty. Hello, El Salvador. Now, El Salvador, I thought you were a bit of a star last night. And thank you for coming on, because it showed that that works. Everybody said they could hear it loud and clear. Oh, sorry, says John Bell. No, John. Don't worry. It was John Cameron. Scotty, what goes round the world but stays in the corner? What goes round the world but stays in the corner? Ooh, that's an interesting one, that, isn't it? What goes round the world that stays in the corner? Television? Could it be television? Evening, Scotty. It's bank. Is it bank holiday up there? No, Kevin Roberts. We do not have a bank holiday up here, so I shall be working, you see. Love the Glasgow Patterson, says Michael Paul McVeigh. We do our best, Michael Paul. I think it's very important. Evening, says Carol Evans. Lisa Trainer's watching. Thank you, do, Lisa. Lovely to have you with us. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. You miss a moment of Scotty McClure. You miss a moment of life. Um, it's the um, Edinburgh International Television Festival has been on there. And I let them know that I was looking for a half hour slot on a television network on, say, a Friday night, maybe 11 till 11.30, that kind of thing. Um, so we'll see what's what. No, I'm absolutely maxed this weekend, guys. No bank holiday. No rest for Scotty McClure. I'm in the garden tonight, in the pond, says El Salvador. A stamp. Nope, says John Cameron. Nope, no, nope, you didn't say it was a stain. Uh, good for us, you're working, says John Boyle. Bless you, John. Well done, Salvador, says John Cameron. He obviously enjoyed it as well. Tremendous. Good evening, Scotty. I hope you're well, sir. Absolutely. Can we tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 that Scotty McClue is live right now on Facebook Live? This is the big one. So um, I shall just do a little bit more sharing. And as I say, if you can do the same, it all, uh, it all helps because it tells 10 to tell 10. Shona Singh, good evening, Scotty. Hope you're well, sir. Absolutely, Shona. Lovely to have you with us. Is it Shona or Shona? I'd like to know. I think that's important. And uh, shall we share to, um, we'll share to this page here. There we are. And just let everybody know it is happening. Have you got a braffer, Scotty McClure? And then I ask you, What's a braffer? 
And you give me the answer to that one. Uh, you deserve a holiday, Scotty McClure. We need to crowdfund a tour. I know you need to go to Scotty McClure's PayPal on the website and put in a pound. Be wonderful. John Gallagher's watching. Dink you do. Thomas Dreckhorn. Tremendous stuff. www.scotty-mcclue.com. You'll see a wee PayPal logo and you can stick in a pound. Hi, Scotty. Say hello to my son, Reese Christie. He loves your shows. Speak to you soon, Scotty. Dink you do, my man, says David Christie. Absolutely, David. No problem at all. Claire Louise Rennick says, Happy Friday, Scotty. Happy Friday to you, Claire Louise. Very good. Now, are we all right without the bonnet, folks? Are you quite happy without the bonnet? We've got the bonnet there, of course, but a lot of people have been saying, no, 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 just, just come on and be yourself. Uh, you don't actually need the bonnet, Scotty. But if you're seeing too much of the thinning on top, do let me know. Kevin Roberts says, as a radio presenter, do you practice RP, or has that now been dropped? I am trained with received pronunciation, which is actually based on the old Southern British standard, which was introduced by Lord Reith of the BBC, who was a Scot and a Glaswegian. And uh, he introduced that because he wanted the newsreaders to sound the same. But you don't hear a lot of received pronunciation. One or two of them do it on the commercial channels and one or two on the BBC. So there we are. But you don't see a lot of it. Yes, thank you, John Cameron. We got that one. Marvellous stuff. Here's El Salvador coming on for a wee chit chat. Shall we have him on? Oh, he's away. Uh, shared off for now. Glad back. No bonnet. Looking smart. Thank you, John Boyle. I'm sure you're looking very smart as well. And dinky do. Leave the bonnet, says David Christie. Leave it off or leave it on, David. That's where you get um, a bit of dubiety when you see something like that. That can be dubious. There could be dubiety, you see. So there you are. Leave the bonnet. Leave it off or leave it on. Wonderful stuff. Right. Uh, do tell, of course, Michael Grichen or Griechen. Right, Michael, you have to tell me. Michael Griechen, or Griechen, is watching right now. We say dinky doo to him. Off, leave the bonnet off, says John Ball. Thanks, John. Yes, I shall do that. I shall leave the bonnet off, and we will just dinky do on without it. Uh, I'm just carrying on with the sharing here. I hope everybody's happy with that. Tell ten, tell ten, tell ten. Be real, Scotty, says John Ball. Good. Well, this is me, John, being real. This is as real as it gets, I say. Now, uh, what am I doing here? I'm going to share to a group. So I'll just let the Scotty McClue fan group, of which there's a few thousand members, and let them know that we are live and that we are going out now. Fantastic. Come on. There we go. Wonderful. Just... Click, click, click. Uh, James Salkeld's watching Gail Stevenson. Thank you, do. Yay, says John Boyle. Absolutely, John. Yay, it is. Uh, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just doing a wee bit of sharing. Won't be a minute. There we are. And uh, sharing to the Scotty McClue fan group. So you want to look that up if you're a Facebooker and join us on that. That would be great. Uh, and I'll just let them know that this is going out live right now. And you're okay, Scotty? Yeah, we're absolutely okay, John. Thanks for asking. Very much appreciated. Uh, bring us on, Scotty, and I'll show you the pond. Well, Al Salvador, pop up and let me know you'd like to come on. Or can I do it from here? Wait till we see. I'm not sure if I can do it from here. Uh, nope, I can't do it from here. You'll have to come on, El Salvador. So there we are. Sing us a song, Scotty, says David Christie. Well, I can't really, you see. I can't pop music. Done that. Um, I thought so. I think RP comes across more articulate. I did not realize it was started in Glasgow. Southern British Standard, the BBC. So there you are. So T-A-H. Yes, T-A-H. Um, Alpha Hotel. So there we go. And uh, T A H. And there's no such word. You're back in Nation Sunday, Scott, is this John McManus. Yes, 10 o'clock sharp, Nation Radio. I would have been on last week, but we had um, a, wee, uh, a wee problem. The poor old producer was indisposed. 
So there we are. So I hope he's okay for this Sunday night. But there we are. Yes, absolutely no problem at all. So um, so the word, if you think about it, T-A-H, um, there's no such word, but you talk about, sorry, I was late. I had a puncture in the tar in the car. Tar in the car, you see. And um, today I was in London and I visited the tar of London. T-A-H, Tower London, you see. Uh, so you've got that. And then they were redoing the road today near to where I work, and they were putting down new tar. You see it? See how it works? You got that one? Michael Yule, Dinky Doo, and Jacqueline Trotter. Welcome, 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 I say. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo, Scotty McClue popping up just for you on a Friday evening to say hi. Can everybody share, 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 share? Spread the word, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Because we used to have some pretty huge numbers on a Sunday evening at 9 o'clock. Anybody remember that one? Anybody there for the Scotty McClue Sunday shows, 9 o'clock, live here on Facebook Live. And uh, Scotty Kringles has joined us. Welcome, Scotty Kringles. I love the Nation app, Scotty. It's a fabulous app. Fabulous radio station, Kevin. Nation Radio is brilliant. I'll try to come on my GF name. So there we are. <laughs> right, my GF, his girlfriend's name, Vicky. So I'll be coming on as Vicky. You know, El Salvador, you were on there before, I seem to remember. We just didn't accept it, so you just need to come back on. Um, so there we are. Carol Cameron, so there we are. Excellent. Hello, Andy Murray, yep, the one and only. He's lying eating pizza and watching you, says Carol. Excellent stuff. And you say hello to Andy Murray. I say, think you do. Andy Murray, we love you. I see it's Scotty highlighting vowels and T's. Well, if you think about it, if you all do it with me, right, we'll do the vowels. Um, A, E, R, O, U. All right, that's the vowels open. So there you are. Dinky do to you, mate. And Gerald Finn, let's sort you out right away. So Gerald Finn is now about to say goodbye. There we are. Bye bye, Gerald. Take care, lot. Right, he's gone. We'll never ever hear from or see Gerald Finn again. Uh, hi, Scotty. John Garvey here. Dinky do, John Garvey. It's wonderful stuff. You've either not spelt your name right at the top or misspelt it. How's things, my friend? Are you going back to the three nights on Nation Radio? No, John, I'm just doing a Sunday night on Nation Radio. Do you want to come on with me, John, right now for a wee chat? Do you fancy it? You'd be very welcome. I think I might be able to bring you on here. No, I can't. But um, if you had the wee camera, you could come on for a chit-chat. Mark Jones is watching. Dinky do, Mark. Lovely to have you with us. Good evening, says Mark. Alan Carmichael, Jeff Bernstein, Jonathan Welch, and Alex Robertson. Lovely to have you with us. Bit more sharing involved, of course, so we'll just do a bit more of that. How you got that space ready for me, says Mark Jones. Of course. Absolutely, we've always got space for you, Mark. Never a problem. And um, what else am I doing? I'm sharing in a group here again, just to let everybody know, tell 10 to tell 10. So we'll wait, all the groups pop up. Um, it takes a little while because I'm on a different device here. I think that's best. Craig Party is watching. Jeff Bernstein, dinky do, dinky do to you, Jeff. Lovely to have you with us and welcome. Now, let me know if you got the notification, if you got the big purple one that said Scotty McClue live 8 p.m., okay? If you saw that on my news feed, then do let us know. I wish you'd been my school teacher, Scotty. I'd have been more successful in my GCSE results. Well, we, we try to look after everybody, inform, educate, and entertain. That's what I say. And of course, this is a world platform. People are watching in America and Canada and Australia, New Zealand, all that sort of thing. Um, 
they're all there and we shall just I'll just pop this up again a little bit slow the old sharer so there were but very kind of you Kevin now I would have not bothered with having a small stake in your education but I think it's very important with so much to talk about and there's always so little oh I see what I'm doing here ah that's better so there we go right wonderful we multitask on here we like that. We multitask. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, there we go. So I'll go on to that, and I'll just let everybody know that we're live now, and they can join us on the Scotty McClue live stream. God bless you, bro. Good to see you again, says Randolph Jack Deal Jr. Randolph Jack Deal Jr., we love having you on here. Which part of the U.S. of A., are you actually in? And thank you for asking about Dinky Doo. There we are. The wonderful Gordon Roddick's just joined us. Dinky Doo, Gordon. Peter Connolly. Scotty, why does someone from Earth always win Miss Universe? <laughs> I love it. Thank you, James McDonald. Very, very good. El Salvador, me failed all it sounds, but got a A in women. <laughs> Very good. I wonder what that was for, El Salvador. But actually might not go there. Um, but wonderful. Do tell, do tell, do tell. Um, Newport uh, in VA. Absolutely. Newport News VA. Randolph Jack Deal Jr. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Do from Scotty McClure. Knowledge is power, Kev. Michael Paul McVeigh couldn't have put it better myself. You're looking very smart tonight, Scotty, says the wonderful Gordon Roddick. Thank you, Gordon. But I shall never be a patch on your good self. You always dressed with sartorial elegance when you turned up for work. So there we are, as a mark of respect for who you are coming to see. An absolute top man. If you ever fancy we chat live on one of the pop-ups, Gordon, you'd be very, very welcome. Uh, Scotty, you've got me in talk radio. It is much better than music for broadening the mind. Of course, depends on the presenters, of course, Scotty McClure, the daddy of them all. But, um, you know, there are one or two very good talk show presenters in the UK. There's just not enough talk shows. We need more and more and more of it. So there we are. Ha, ah, says El Salvador. He's laughing his head off here. We like that. Tremendous. Absolutely, Michael. So there you are. You guys are talking to each other. I like that. And we had El Salvador on live last night, and I've uploaded that to YouTube, guys. So you'll be able to go on the Scotty McClure YouTube channel, and uh, we've uploaded that as well. If Scotty McClure's made you smile, then you can pop a pound into PayPal on the Scotty McClure website. So there you are. Got 4% battery. Throw us a generator, Scotty. El Salvador. That was what was happening last night. I was losing power. So there you go. Always, says Michael. He's talking to, uh, yes, he's talking to himself there, actually. Wonderful. I just read that there, Michael. You are talking to yourself. We like that. Very good. I've just downloaded the world's worst thesaurus, Scotty. Not only is it terrible, it's terrible. <laughs> well, I once sent for a thesaurus, and when I arrived on a thesaurus, all the pages were blank, and I was so angry because I couldn't find the words to express myself, you know. So there you go. That's what can happen. I tell you. Right. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Everybody have a share now. Share, 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 share. Why do some people say many hands make light work? So there we are. And others say meant too many cooks spoil the broth. Now, that baffles me. I suppose it depends if you're sticking on the light or boiling up the broth. Scotty, make my Friday, please, and give me a hello badly, please. Stuart Noon, I shall give you a hello. Hello, Stuart. How are you? And dinky-doo. Uh, that was funny, McClure, watching again this morning, mate. Yes, El Salvador, you are very, very good. 
So there you are. I saw it when I was transferring it, and I hope you like that. So there we go. Very, very good. Um, it was funny. Of course it is. You're number one, Alex Carroll. So are you, dinky-doo. Yes, you don't just have num one number one, you know. You can take tons of it. Um, Baldy, sorry, thank you. Oh, there we are. I thought you said Baldy, but a Baldy, give you a Baldy. Yes, absolutely. Have you got a baldy, Stuart Noon? Lovely to have you with us in Dinky Doo from Scotty McClure. Scotty, get cut off. I have a certificate. I'm semi-sane. Michael Paul, no, you're back with us. Not a problem. Excellent stuff. Now, a bit more sharing, of course. Share, 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 share. You know what I've just realized? This pop-up is halfway through. I don't know. And we don't have a bank holiday in Scotland. And McClue's maxed all weekend. Oh, my goodness. Yes, for too long now, says Stuart. Ah, no. Yeah, a lot of people actually don't need to be a baldy, but they shave their head, right? They shave their head because they like being a baldy. That's quite interesting, isn't it? I could always put my bonnet on, but everybody said, no, no, I'll keep the bonnet off, Scotty. Just be yourself, for goodness sake. Pop up and say dinky-doo to every single one of you. Excellent. Good to have your comments on here tonight. That is tremendous. Now, I'm just going to share to the dinky-doo page. And let everybody know what is happening. So there we go. So how long have you been a baldy, Stuart? Do tell. There's a dinky-doo page. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Fraser Macduff has just joined us. Welcome, 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 Fraser. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty McClure's pop-up just for you, dinky-doo. So there we are. My favourite teacher was Mrs. Turtle. Strange name, but she a tortoise. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff Bernstein. Very good. Have you ever heard of Mrs. Tilcher? There we are. She was a primary school teacher, but how would you have heard of Mrs. Tilcher? T-I-L-C-H-E-R. Mrs. Tilcher. Uh, I used to work with a guy called Andy, but in the workplace was all... And, um, yes. So there we go. I can't... There we go. Resume. Uh, I must turn on notifications. I keep missing when you go live in the evening. John Holmes, you must turn on your notifications. Very important. Since I was 19, Scotty, and I'm 52 now. So also, there's a gentleman went bald at 19. Can anybody beat that? Um, and he's 52, so he's been bald for 33 years. Good evening, Scotty, says Ned McMillan. Good evening, Ned. Lovely to have you with us. Can everybody share, please? How about doing patenting a Scotty bonnet? Well, yes, I have a number of patents. Um, what's a bank holiday, Scotty? I work in car sales. Never heard of it. Peter Connolly, you have my support 100%. Uh, my favourite teacher was Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes, hello, dear. How are you? So there we are. Thought you and the audience might like this old joke from Monty Python. What's brown and sounds like a bell? Says Ian Dickey. Dung. Um, what do you call a bloke with hair? <laughs> Alas, eh? <laughs> Scotty, I remember a radio episode in Scott FM. We had a great conversation with a gentleman about Clyde Steamers. It was fantastic radio. Andrew McDonald, if you want a conversation about Clyde Steamers, you'd be very, very welcome. I was just talking to somebody today about the little um, boat called the Second Snark, and she was built by Denny of Dumbarton, and we were wondering if she originally had Glenifer engines in it. Scotty, do you need to do you need to do merchandise, dinky do, mugs, t shirts, etc. I know Kevin Roberts. I need to get organized, but I'm maxed, maxed. Hi Scotty, enjoying the pop up, says David Carr. John Holmes says, Scotty, I went bald at twenty three. So there you go. Absolutely amazing. Uh, do you like the Friday night pop up, guys? Is this good stuff? Uh, what's white and wears tartan trousers? So there you go. Rupert the Fridge. <laughs> Stuart Noon, steady on. So there we are. We are an adult program. Uh, although we're of all age, we're not of any particular age. I used to say this to people that used to say, um, what's your show about, Scotty? Is it Scotty McClure? 
No, what's that about? So it's about Scott and Clue. And the people. We chit chat, we talk. So there we are. These pop ups are great, Scotty. Keep up the good work, says Jeff Benson. Uh, when are you going on TV? Thomas Hamilton. It's the Edinburgh International Television Festival. And they have all the big wigs up from the television companies. And I've tweeted to them on Twitter. So go on and follow Scotty McClue on Twitter at Scotty McClue and make sure you're there. And I've said to them, Scotty McClue. The world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet is looking for a half-hour slot, preferably a Friday night. And uh, I want to do a half-hour on television and get the calls in. And let's do a bit of chit-chat. So it would be something like this with probably better lighting or something like that. Is the lighting okay? There's Jim Thompson. What a top man. Thank you, dude, Jim. Lovely to have you with us. A man that supported Scotty McClue through thick and thin. Although I've never been thick and I've never been thin. What's the difference between a snowman? Oh, for goodness sake. John Holmes, steady on. So there we go. Right. Uh, keep, your, keep your numbers coming in there so I can talk to you. So there we go. Um... Scott McClure, I hear Jeremy Carl's coming back, similar show to the last one, but isn't allowed to use the lie detector. Ooh, there you are, extra stuff. Uh, and of course, if you remember, Jeremy Carl replaced Scotty McClue at Century Radio in Manchester. Um, Kelvin Allen, dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome, 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 I say. Always good to have you all with us. Tell ten to tell ten to tell ten to tell ten. Peter Connolly says, love the pop-ups, Scotty. As I said, I work in car sales. So, Justin, that's why I've joined you. Now, Peter Connolly, I was going to show you my support. I know you have a language with your own. That car's at a wee haircut. Ooh, that's at a wee kiss in the back, that. Uh, all that sort of thing. Um, but... What I was thinking, sorry, Scott, it's a John Holmes. Tut, 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 John Holmes. What I was going to say to you, John Connolly, is um, I know how hard you guys have to work these days um, and what have you. And I remember seeing a well-known Scottish car sales company. And it was a winter's morning. It was just January. It was just the, 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 the start um, of the new year. And there was a thick, frozen snow. And this chap was out in one of the company anoraks, clearing all the cars of snow. So obviously he'd been sent out by the sales manager. Let's get the snow off all these cars. We're not going to sell them if nobody can see them. What about that for dedication? Thought I'd just tell you that. Uh, hi, Hanson, says Alison Fitzpatrick. Thank you, Alison. Very, very kind of you. Uh, Jeremy Carl needs to replace uh, the lie detector people. So there we go, says Kevin Roberts. I don't know, Kevin. I'm not going into all that. So there we are. Well, maybe not, in fact, say that. So there we are. I'll just take that one out. Uh, not a problem, but um, I'll just take that one out if that's all right. So there you are. If you've just joined us, a warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClure, the first lord of the internet, the one stop broadcaster. And we've popped up on Facebook Live just to say dinky do to every single one of you. Tony Mack has joined us. Welcome, Tony. Lovely to have you with us, of course. Always good to have Tony with us because um, he's good chat. You see, he's a broadcaster. So there you go. Evening, Scotty. Evening, Tony Mack. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky do, as I say. What do you think of tonight's pop-up? Have I got the time right? That's what we wonder. Have we got the time right? Now, if you can all share, that would be wonderful. And keep sharing. I'm just sharing. So just um, take your mouse or take your finger if you're on your device and go up and share it with everybody. And uh, tell 10 to tell 10. So there we are. Yes, absolutely, Michael Paul McVeigh. Yes, quite right too. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, you can't, uh, you can't be too careful. I always say. Um, but good to have you with us. And uh, dinky do to every single one of you. Now, have we shared? Have you done a bit of sharing? That's what I need to know. 
And um, does anybody want to come on for a wee chat? We found out last night that you can come on. Uh, Kevin Roberts says, sorry, my humour is a bit non-PC, child of the 70s. Kevin Roberts, I absolutely understand, you know, child of the 80s myself. Um, you know, so I can imagine how you older people feel about these things. The timing spot on, Scotty. The ice cream man just arrived with my 99 and a cone for the dog. Jeff Bernstein, my grandfather used to go into the ice cream shop and he would ask for a pokey hat and a slider. Have you ever heard that? The pokey hat was a cone for me and a slider for himself, a wafer. Scotty, you still doing the weekend shows? And has the powers that be maybe given you a Thursday to Monday? Eh, no, they haven't, John Holmes. I don't think they're going to, because they want their pop music on a Saturday night, Friday, Saturday. Therefore, I'm on on a Sunday. But I'm quite delighted to uh, to be still on the radio. I think that's marvellous. It really is. And uh, it's just a nice gentle show where we all have a bit of a chit chat and Sunday evening's figures are very very good so we decided that we would go for the Sunday evening being the best evening for you all to have Scotty McClure on live on the radio Nation Radio 96.3 on the FM www.nationradio.scot um, thanks, Scotty. That's the reality of the job. And lots more. My wife seems to think I sit in a hot office and just waiting customers to walk in. No, no. You've got to phone out, Peter, because people won't necessarily phone in. My grandmother told me once I was to sell fish, so I became a fishmonger. It's funny, though. You never actually go into a fish shop and say, Good, good morning, fishmonger. Could you monger me? Some fish. So there we go. Oh, God, not the ice cream man. <laughs> My Dane Crystal until he gets a cone. Kevin Roberts, I think maybe the predictive text has run away on you there. Ha, 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 Scotty, I write the 1800s. Wonderful. So there you are. Yes, I'm a man of the, of the 1980s. And also on the Dab Dab. Dab dab, you can't beat a wee dab, I always say. A bit of dabbing, just to keep you all out of mischief. Fantastic stuff. And uh, what do you think? No bunnet. Is that acceptable? There's a Scotty McClure's Pete. Scotty, I've sent you a few requests. You're not getting them. I'm not El Salvador, Stallione Saviar. I'm getting no requests at all. Do you remember the ice cream oysters? Yes, an oyster. That was always an excellent thing. We liked that. Um, predictive text indeed. All right, Scotty, how are you keeping, says Rab Hill? Dinky do, Rab. Lovely to have you with us. There's Nicky McHugh. Alistair King is watching. Dinky do, Alistair King. Lovely to have you with us. Now, Alistair, good news. My spark plug is out. I was just at the end of my tether. And a top engineer appeared, and he had a go at it, and uh, it was uh, it was pretty tough stuff. But out it came. It was just the bottom remnants. So they are uh, aha, dinky do, Scotty. Good evening. Yes, the spark plugs out. John Garvey, Scotty, I lost my antidepressants. I hope the person who got them is happy. <laughs> John Garvey, you're a naughty boy. Um, it's too hot for headwear says Kevin Roberts. Yes, do you wear a lot of headwear yourself, Kev? Um, did you hear about the oyster that went into the discus, Scotty? It pulled a muscle. Did you hear about the lobster that was looking just a bit red in the face? Somebody said, what's up with you? He said, I got beaten up in the pub. He says, what for? He said, you're in here every night giving it that. Giving it that, the lobster. We love it. Bunnet or not, you're still a top disc jockey, says John Holmes. Oh, we can spin a few discs, John. Just downloaded the Nation Radio app so I can listen to your good self on Sunday night, Scotty, says Ian Dickey. Thanks, Ian. Can everybody go and download the Nation Radio Scotland app? 
All right. Nation Radio app. Uh, fantastic. There's only one top engineer, Scotty. That's me. Don't mean to toot my own whistle. You can toot your own whistle because you're a man of the thistle, Alistair King. Fantastic. But have you ever seen that before? Broken off right at the top of the wee cup. So there we are. All we got out was the thread and the wee raised bit at the top. So there you are. And um, there's been a tiny wee bit of scraping just on the edge of the block, just where I've been hammering something down. Do you think that's all right? Uh, only on building sites, Scotty. I was at the doctor the day, Scotty. He said I felt like a coconut. The doctor said, I, your bounty. Your bounty. I was at the doctor and he said to me, hey, what's wrong? I said, I'm just feeling that I'm like a pair of curtains. He said, well, you need to pull yourself together. Oh, there you are, wonderful stuff. I put my hand out to stop a bus this morning. I just wasn't strong enough. Uh, excellent stuff. Everyone's got a wee jeep. You can still get oysters. You need to ask Scotty if I can mention what store. I can mention the store in the UK where you can purchase. No, Michael Palmer, we will not do any names of businesses or any names of individuals. Uh, the top block, the top's only porcelain, easily broken, very fragile. Do you think when the porcelain came out that the electrode would have come out with it? The bottom electrode's there. It was just knocked down a bit by the tool to get it out. But uh, the other bit, would it have come out with the porcelain? That's what I ask. A horse walks up to a bar and the bartender says, Why the long face? Wonderful. A giraffe tried to borrow five pounds from me. I said, you've got some neck. Tell you that. Uh, I wonder, could we do better on the lighting, guys? Is the lighting a wee bit dull? Oh, that's terribly dull. There was that. Uh, wait to see. Wait to see. What have we got here? What about that? Any better? Any better? Any better? Wonderful bit of lighting. Is the backlight too bright? I say. It, it usually snaps off, says Alistair King. What do you mean drops into the bore, Alistair? Or, uh, you know, I don't think it would have got down there if the other electrode was all right. Uh, put a very light smear of copper grease around the spark plug threads. It will make it easy for the next change, says Kevin Roberts. Ha ha! Excellent stuff. Well, they should only be in hand tight anyway, for goodness sake. So there we are. Alice, they're always interested in uh, in your input there. Excellent stuff. What would have happened to the, the other wee tip, the one that sparks onto the bottom one? Um, always good chat. Who was asking about Clyde steamers? Anybody remember the Clyde steamers? There you go. And we can have a chat with that. The Waverley is going to get her new boilers. Last time I heard, the wife just phoned me, Scotty, and said, I have good news and bad news. I says, what's the good news? I asked the airbags are working, she said. I asked if the airbags are working. I don't quite get that one, but maybe I'm being a little bit slow tonight. Jeff Bernstein, I'm petrified of escalators. I take a lot of steps to avoid them. We love that, Jeff Bernstein. Excellent stuff. I can't do my uh, funny laughing faces on here. I usually can. So there we are. Excellent stuff. If that broke off, it would damage the piston or jam up a valve. Well, I've had a look in side the head with a scope and uh, I can't see anything Alistair so um, I don't think there's anything down there so hopefully it came out with the porcelain I was trying to get a hold of the chap that, uh, that took the plug out to ask if he'd seen the internal electrode so there we are but the other one's certainly there it's fine um, and I don't seem to have anything I made a little hoover pipe and put that down just to check as well. My dad was a steamer, Scotty. He walked in the Clyde, and he liked a Cali special. Even hand tight, you get a reaction of the pluggers going into an aluminium block, which will make them seize, says Kevin Roberts. Well, I suppose, yes, you can get a corrosion builds up between the aluminium and the steel. Uh, she said the airbags are working in the car. Oh, right. Uh, you got off lightly. Very. Oh, I get it now. You got off lightly. Very lucky, 
This is Alistair King. Well, hopefully, Alistair, I haven't turned her over yet. I've been in the Waverley a few times, Scott. It's a wonderful experience, says Jeff Bernstein. Something wrong tonight, uh, Scott, who sent the request to mine and Vicky's. You're not getting them. We'll be in the next one. A granddad was taking his grandson for a drive. A car crashed into the back of them. When the driver came out, it looked like she had blood in her face. She was doing her makeup. In the mirror, says Tony. My goodness, Tony. Paul Robinson is watching. One of our top media managers. Always lovely to have him with us. Walked into the doctor's consulting room. He said, ah, hello. I'd like you to take off your clothes and stand by the window. I said, why is that? He said, because I don't like the people who live opposite. <laughs> is this joke night, big man? I don't know. If you're worried, Scotty, do a compression test. The test is only a few quid on a famous internet auction site. Kevin Roberts, you're very good. You know your motor cars. I mean, Alistair King is the king when it comes to motor cars. But uh, you seem to know your motor cars, Kevin Roberts. I shall tell you that for nothing. Guys, is the lighting all right? Mine looks a little bit dim here. Can you see me? Can you see it's Scotty McClure saying dinky-doo to every single one of you? There we are. Is that any better? I don't know. Um, the um, President of the United States, the Queen, and His Holiness the Pope, walked into a bar. And the barman said, is this the start of some kind of joke? <laughs> what about that? Um, yes, do a compression test. Fantastic, right? And uh, that would tell me, would it? That would tell me. Um, what would your compression test, apart from the compression, what else would it tell me? Thanks for the compliment, Scotty. Not at all, Alistair King. It's fine, says Rab. Ex-mechanic, now a field service engineer. Very good, Kevin Roberts. I've be, been delighted to get back to my mechanics because most modern cars, but I've got two cars. One's 20 years old and the other's 27 years old. So there we are. So they're kind of in the right era, you know. The lights are fine, says Karim Sakharaya. Maybe it's just my setup, the way it's sitting, Karim. You know, it doesn't look terribly bright. And uh, I wouldn't like to look too dull in front of my people. Wonderful stuff. Now, oh my goodness, the time is flying in. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10, Scotty McClure, live just for you. Can everybody do a share? If you're watching right now, do a share. I shall share again here. Uh, that's excellent stuff. Um, I've got 18, says Al 18 cars, Alistair. Are you a classic car man? Or um, have you just got a load of cars in there? Uh, what do you think of... Mr. Trump calling himself the chosen one. Well, it depends who's chosen you. Um, if all cylinders give equal readings, the chances are no damage has been caused. I see what you mean. Yes, of course. The compression's the same on all the cylinders. Fantastic stuff. So there you are. Um, the only thing is, when I was hammering something down to try and weaken the little cup and the plug, I've just done the tiniest tiniest little chippings around the steel um on top of the uh, on top of the block guy walks into a bar what's this let me see what's good out here guy walks into a bar with jump leads around his head and the barman said now don't you be starting anything Guy walks into the dole at um, half past four on a Friday afternoon. And the guy's just finishing up. He says, is there anything I get? Can I help you, sir? Anything I can get you? He said, I just wondered if you'd got any jobs. He said, is it for yourself? He said, as a matter of fact, I have. He said, now, this one, you'd need to go to America, but the, the, the money's superb. You'd be driving the supermodels, so you're a chauffeur. You'd be able to stay in the mansions. You'd get a share of the pool. You could help yourself to all the food and all that sort of thing. So it is a pretty good job. And the guy said, are you taking the mickey out of me? And the guy says, well, you started it. 
Do you like it? Oh, wonderful. So there you are. Can we have a two-hour show, please, Scotty? Do part one and part two. No, El Salvador, we only did part one and part two last night because we lost the broadcast. So I had to tell everybody what was going on. Love my cars, Scotty, especially the classics. What's your favourite classic car, Kevin Roberts? Do tell. I can write back, right? Here's one for you. Have you ever heard of a Delage? A friend of mine had a Delage. What about that? And the cars still have points. A rotor arm and a distributor cap. I used to serve as my own cars, but wouldn't know where to start these days. Well, mine does, I have to say. I've got a rotor arm and a distributor cap. Um, where are you now? You used to work in Edinburgh. Uh, I remember you. Ice cream. Did I come in for the ice cream, Ross? Excellent. Fantastic. Yes, Edinburgh, no Glasgow now. Might be able to bring people on in part two, says El Salvador. No, I think the nations had enough of me popping up tonight. El Salvador. So there we are. You should get the phone. Good evening, Scott Ayers, says Steve Burrows. My dream car is the Volvo P1800s, is driven by Roger Moore in The Saint. I had a friend used to sell them. Right, they they sold uh, Volvo and Saab, and there was quite a few P eighteen hundreds around at the time. I haven't driven them, but it is a lovely, lovely car. So they are now. I'm sure there was a story about that. I'm sure there was a story about that. It was something to do. They were going to have another make of car, and it was something about Lord Grade had specified something at the time. Lou. Lou had wanted something at the time, and um, the company didn't want to supply it or something like that. I can't remember, and that's why they went with Volvo for the uh, P1800s. Very doubt your tapping has done anything other than cosmetic damage. Well, Kevin, it's very, very tiny. It just looks like a tiny wee bit of particle where I've given it a good whack, whack, whack at the side. The damage I'd done was mainly to the plug that was stuck in, but there was a couple of wee, just where it had skited, uh, a couple of wee, oh, the tiniest wee chips on the, the side of the, the, the socket going into the head. Uh, yes, classics only, Volvo Reliant, uh, Mini Morrissey's Marina, Maxi, I've had a Maxi, yeah, Ford Pop, which particular pop? The wee square one or the wee upright? Uh, the Sierra. So there you are. I've named a few in the collection. Yeah, these are all excellent motors. Um, I had um, an Austin Allegro Vanden Pla. And I think it was a 1750 I had in it. Would that be possible? I was at the 1500. Can't remember. And I had a Maxi as well. You should get the phone in on here again, Scotty, says Rab. Well, Rab, we found last night we can bring people on. So we can have people on for a chat. Uh, the Mini, I had a Mini 850. So there you are. I could have done with a wee bit more power, but a Mini 850. Old Fords for me, Scotty, a Mark I RS Escort is my dream classic. Uh, now, a Mark I RS. So was that the square one? The Mark II was the weekend of rounded. Very nice little Ford Escorts were great. Ford cars were great. I never had Ford cars apart from uh, a company car or something like that. Escorts, but they were very, very good very, very good cars, but they go right back. You can go right back to a very early Ford Escort. And the Capri, that was a very, very popular car. Very popular with DJs. And I think you could get a 1300 Capri. So you got the looks, but you didn't have to fork out for massive, uh, massive fuel. There we are. What kind of car have you got? I've got a 16-year-old VW Polo. Great car. They are excellent cars. I had a Morris Minor, a 1960 Morris Minor with a starting handle. How fantastic was that? I have five Volvos. Um, so there we are. I have an Amazon. How fabulous. Do you know what was a great Volvo? The 264. Have I got that right? Was that a 264? 
Uh, no, sorry. You had the 122. That was the old rounded one from the early 60s. You had the 144, and you had a 164. And then I think you had a 244, and I think you had a 264, the six-cylinder. Am I correct? But the 164 was a gorgeous creature. And there you are, fabulous car. I was just thinking about them. My father ran Volvos, and they were very, very good. Did you have a curry tonight, Scotty? Says Alan McGee. No, I didn't, Alan. I didn't go for the curry. I had the fish, fish on a Friday. Very, very nice. Have a look at the NEC Classic Car Show in November, Scotty, says Kevin Roberts. There you are. Years ago, best car I bought was a Lada for 100 quid. I had it for three years. Best um, one, I'm not trying to top you, Rab Hill, but I had a Skoda Estelle. Uh, it was almost new. I paid £1,100, kept it for five years, and got 550 for it when I turned it in. So there you are. See? Not bad. Two cars I've always wanted to own, at least for a while, are the Ford Capri and the Jaguar XJ6. Now, the XJ6, is the Series 2s and 3s, they had um, a 3.4, or a 4.2 if you're going for the six cylinder. And then in 1969, the 12 came in so you could get a V12 5.3. But it's kind of shoehorned in under the bonnet. I've got a Maxis 1750. Excellent cars, Alison. Now, you can sleep in the Maxi. Yes, you could actually get quite a nice sleep in the back of the Maxi, put all the seats down. And uh, I seem to remember it must have been six feet because I had a very comfortable sleep in the back of my Maxi. I know that story, Scotty. I think it was uh, Jaguar Scotty refused to supply a car for the program. P of Charles Lugrade offered a P1800 and Roger Moore bought one. Both were used in the program. So there you are. Worst car you've ever owned, Scotty? Uh, so there we are, Kevin Roberts. Well, no, I'm not going to go into, I'm not going to knock cars because that's opinion. Heather Moore, Dinky Do, Alistair King, gold with brown interior. So there we are, very, very nice. I'll bet you that's harvest gold. That was the colour at the time. Check that one for me, Alistair. Diane Marchand, hello, Scotty. Hello, Diane, Dinky Doo, and welcome to our Friday night uh, live on Facebook Live. Do you still have your black dog? I do, Ross Watt. There is Lord Reith. Uh, that was his graduation. He graduated in coming back on his own scent, and I went along with him to receive his degree. So there you are. That's him. That was Lord Reith. Um, I've had um, the Muscovich as well. Sold it 10 years ago. Yes, very interesting cars, Eastern Europeans. Have you ever had a Trabant? Good evening, Scotty. I'm late, says Julie Shaw. You're shockingly, horribly, and appallingly late, Julie Shaw. But... You're here. Never miss a moment of Scotty McClue, or you miss a moment of life. Lovely to have you with us. El Salvador Stallione, saviour. Hi, Julie. Scotty can't get me on the floor tonight. You're going on the show. Yes, come on, Julie, for a wee chat. I think Volvo translates as rolls, says, uh, says Tony. Very interesting. I have a receipt for a Mark 1 Ford Escort 1300E. My dad bought in 1974, brand new 1376 pounds on the road. Today's price, 18,700. Well, there you are. Well, even if you're 10 times, it would certainly be 13,000 for starters. And then another 5K, I would think, Peter just to give you a wee bit of equity, a wee bit something in it. So there we are. <laughs> I have a Peugeot 2008, says Kareem. Very good, yes. Well, Volvo are fabulous cars because, of course, they had to withstand the Swedish winters and all the salt on the road. They're very, very substantially built. 
Uh, fish on a Friday. Are you RC Scotty? No, Julie, you don't necessarily need to be RC to have fish on a Friday to uh, stew meat. My first car was a Morris Oxford, says uh, Gordon Roddick. Now, Gordon, was it the Isis Oxford? Was it the round one from the 50s? Um, that was an excellent car, the Morris Oxford, the Isis. And it is still the basis, I think, of the um, Austin Hindustani uh, in uh, India, which is used for taxing. And then there was the big Farina Morris Oxford, which was getting on for the very late 50s and 60s. Well, they're excellent. I've got two C70s and an Amazon and a 244. Alistair King, yes, the 244. That, um, my father had one of those and also the 144. Uh, they're lovely, especially in purple. My first car was a Hillman Imp, says Evan Thompson. <laughs> Mike McCabe, Hillman Hunter, had two of them, says Rab, probably built at Roots in Linwood at the time. Uh, my dad had an old orange Volvo, which was very brave, living in the Gorbals. Not at all, Tony Mac, it's excellent stuff. I can remember being out on the town in Barnsley, and um, things were very tight for people in Barnsley at the time because Thatcher had taken the mines away from them. And it was a Saturday night, and there was a fair bit of alcohol had been taken by a lot of the young revelers. And a guy came through with a beautiful, sparkling claret Rolls Royce with his girlfriend in it. And he tooted to get by because there was a lot of people sort of stoting about on the road. And he went, beep, beep. Well, this is fantastic. And people turned around, and I thought, oh, dear. I hope there's not going to be a problem with the car. And they all moved to the side and cheered and applauded. Whoa! Go on, son! And I thought, now that's Barnsley for you. So there you are. So I was very surprised when I heard that a lot of Barnsley people had voted to leave the EU. Very strange. The EU are saviors. So there we go. Uh, Ali B says, you all right, handsome? This is Mike McCabe. Uh, yes, thank you, Scotty. Are you on till nine? I'm heading to Prestwick, says Michael Paul McVay. Yes, indeed, but I will have to push off uh, at some point. I once owned a Daimler 5.366, a 1973 and an L-Reg. So there we are. It was owned by Robert Maxwell when it was new. Peter Connolly. Very, very swish stuff, that. And, uh, hi, Pablo. I can't see any comments. I hope you're well, buddy, says Julie Shaw. Julie, of course. Alistair King, no, I've had a Fiat 126 and a Yugo. Yes, Y-U-G-O. And Russia, I think, if I remember, their limousines were a Zill. C-I-double-L, could I be correct? Remember, this is all coming off the top of the head, guys. I don't use search engines or anything when I'm doing a program, as you all well know. Uh, yes, some good thanks, says El Salvador. Uh, my first car was a 1975 Opel Cadet, -E -T -T, says Jeff Bernstein. The rear window was heated. It kept my hands warm when I was pushing it. Now, I was trying to think today... You must be septic, Jeff Bernstein, because I was trying to think today, Vauxhall had an, it's just come to my mind. I was going to say, Vauxhall had an equivalent, and I was trying to remember what it was called, an equivalent of the Opel Cadet, because there were General Motors, and it's just come right into my mind as we spoke, the Vauxhall Chevette, is that right? The Chevette and the Cadet were similar um, cars. Julie Shaw, Volvo are sturdy big cars. Oh, excellent, Julie Shaw. A first-class car and very, very, very good value as well, the Volvo. You get real quality for not huge, crazy prices. So there you are. Volvo also have a five-star cap rating, Scotty. Yes, Alistair King. Talking of five stars, do you remember four-star petrol? Was there ever a five-star petrol? But you, you put, you could put, say, what do you, what does this take? And people say, oh, it takes two star. And then you had four star. 
after Arthur Daly in Minder bought a Shaban, a Shaban or a Trabant Ross. We're trying to work out what that one was. Stevie Wood, dinky do, lovely to have you with us. We're just discussing motor cars. I miss you on the radio, but can see you here, Scotty, says Peter Lockwood. I know, Peter, is it a good idea to do these pop-ups? Is everybody happy with them? Do let me know. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm growing up now. I don't know what I'm going to do when I'm older, but, uh, you know, when I grow up. But I'm growing up now, so, I mean, I can take it. Uh, if uh, if people say, oh, no, for goodness sake, Scotty. Now, when I met my other half, says Judy Shaw, he had a Fiat X19. I went for the car. They were very swish. Now, if I remember, it was a little sports car, and I think the engine was kind of in the middle towards the back of the car. Is that right? And you had a couple of seats in front, the X19. Yes, I love your pop-ups. Who said that? Somebody nice. Yes, there we are. Elaine Andrews, dinky do and a kiss. Hello, Elaine Andrews. Lovely to have you with us. Alistair King, Scotty the Boy Racer. Good evening, Scotty. Re-religion. We're all Jock Tamson's bairns. Michael Paul McVeigh wants interesting. If I asked you the question, what religion is his Holiness the Pope. What would your answer be? You can answer me. There are no rude or silly answers, by the way. Let's respect everybody. But what religion is His Holiness the Pope? Pop that on there and tell us. Who said a man never grows up? Nicky Harvey winning. Lovely to have you with us. Giancarlo Rossi. Sal Williams. Hi, Scotty. I'm down at Loch Lomond. Excellent. When are you back on national radio? Rab Hill, I'm on the radio on Nation Radio, Sunday night, 10 o'clock sharp. Be there or be square. Wonderful. Mind back in the days if you had an AA badge in your car, the AA man saluted you when you passed by. Absolutely. Yeah, so did the RAC man, I think, as well. You had an RAC badge. What do you think about the scrapping of HS2, says Kevin Roberts? I think the money from HS2 should be given to either the commercial television channels or to the BBC to bring you the Scotty McClue show live on television. Right? So that's what I think should happen to the money from HS2. I still have my first car, my Reliance Super Robin. 1966 now. I think Reliant, they did a scimitar and um, Her Royal Highness Princess Anne had the Reliant scimitar and they also had a little one called the Kitten. Now, am I right? Do tell. With an old green Nissan Micra, a great car, we nearly get hit by people when driving in an orange walk. Angela Goodlett, don't forget the sporty Opal Manta. Now, the Opal uh, as well, you had the Opal Cadet and the Manta. Was it a Manta, Opal Manta, or Opal, Opal Mantra? Manta, right, Opal Manta, yes. Here's one for you. Has anybody ever heard of a Vauxhall Forenza? Ooh, there you go. There's one for you now. I'll tell you that. The Opel Cadet was a Vauxhall Chevette. The bigger one was the Cavalier. Was that the, um, what did the, what was the Opel version of that? There was a record. Was there not an Opel record? Gosh, you're bringing back all these memories, guys. Fantastic. The commercial version, version was the Chervan. Has he froze? Sal Williams, no, hopefully not. Scimitar was a beautiful car. Angela Goodlett, good evening. The old cars are the best. Yes, indeed. My lawnmower takes two stars, says Rab. I remember four star. I had to convert half of my cars to run on the new unleaded. Get the catalytic converters on, Alistair King. Do you remember the early catalytic converters smelt of rotten eggs when the car passed by. Why was that? The Opal Senator. Now, see the Senators. No, was that not the Vauxhall Senator? I don't know that Opal did. I think they had, Opal had the, the one that I just mentioned there. I think they had that. I think Vauxhall did a Senator and the police 
had a lot of them. Great, big, fast, juicy car. Uh, so there we are. Was the five-star petrol? I know there was um, there was ones that they used to use. There was 100 octane. Does that make sense? Yes, I love your pop-ups, but still miss you on the radio all weekend. I know, Julie, the radio is good. Um, Scott, I've got a better since Volkswagen took them over. The old joke about Scott, yeah, but they were fabulous, Tony Mac. They were actually excellent. It got me out of a difficult time as a student. I ran a Skoda. Yes, because if you're not on the radio often, why not here? Says Peter Lockwood. Yes, absolutely, Peter. Well, we've done a few pop-ups this week. This is the fourth one, I think. Yes, we did... Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and tonight. And we did Tuesday 8 till 9, and Wednesday 7 till 8, and Thursday last night we did 6 till 7, I think. Is that right? Yes. I think we did 6 till 7, just to try and get the optimum best time. Does this suit everybody? 8 o'clock till 9. Tell 10 to tell 10. Here's a bit of trivia, Scotty. Roger Moore played Lord Brett Sinclair in The Persuaders, yes? And his Aston Martin has the plate BS1. The plate was actually owned by Billy Smart, the circus bloke. How fantastic. There's a bit because Lou Grade was a wonderful, wonderful entertainer. And somebody had gone right round the ITV companies and been turned down. And they said, what is it you do? And they said, I get little puppets and we do dramas with them and we have explosions and little pyrotechnics and all that. And I went, nah, 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 nah. Nah, we'll not, we'll not have that. They went to Lou Grade and he's a big cigar smoker. And he goes, I take as much of this as you can give me. And it was Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons, Stingray, Fireball XL5, right? All these wonderful, wonderful children's programs and super marionation with the wee puppets and everything. We watched Stingray on a Sunday afternoon, all that sort of stuff. I wish Gordon Roddick was here. He would be able to tell me all of these. And um, it was quite fantastic. And then another guy went in and, uh, you know, said, um, I've got some puppets and some glove puppets and all that. And the other television stations have gone, nah, I don't think we want that. Lou Grade, I take as much of this as you can give me. The Muppets, how fantastic was that? And somebody has actually said, if Lou Grade was alive today, Scotty McClue would never be off our TV screens. Now, what about that? Now, guys, let's not, I'm not kidding myself. I may not be an oil painting, but having said that, and I might not be in the very first flush of youth, but I think that this could be a massive, massive seller on television, a pop-up for a chat. And I think television companies should try this so there we are. I'm not going to go back to reading the news right now, but I think the television companies should look at a wee bit of chit-chat, wee bit of comedy, just for half an hour, phone in, all that sort of thing, see how it goes. What do you think? So there we are. I'll take your answer. Now, when Roger Moore went in to see Lou, a man never grows up, Scotty. The toys just get bigger. <laughs> there was one of the top Italian designers, somebody who was on about aerodynamics, and he said, aerodynamics, what do you think engines are for? And of course, that was the whole thing with flight. You know, uh, the reason that people advanced with aircraft is because they got bigger engines. Very simple, really. Here's the wonderful Gordon Roddick. In the 1950s, when you ordered a new car, you had to pay extra for a heater and a radio. Yes, you did, Gordon. And in the 1950s, I think you had to pay purchase tax on a car. Is that right? And of course, Britain was still all round the world on it. So old colonial jaunts. So a lot of British cars went out to Africa and uh, to India to Australia, New Zealand, South America, that sort of thing. Wonderful. So there you are. So that's what I had.
And you could tell us what you think about that. Yes, the X-19 had the engine at the back and it was noisy. A wee two-seater on the roof came off. Look the part, Julie Shaw. You are such a smoothie. Wonderful. Do you remember that name? A smoothie. My first car was a 1981 VW Polo. It was 900cc and ran on two-star petrol in Dickey. We love this. This is fantastic. Joseph Schiavone. I must go now, guys. James McDonald's watching. Guy came into my showroom today with a 2002 Ford Fiesta, 200,000 miles on the clock. Is it worth a thousand, he asked. Yes, I said, if it has 900 in the glove box and towing a caravan. <laughs> I love it, darlings. I must go. Rory Mitchelson, dinky do. Woo! Uh, there's also a wee ladder Riva in my collection, formerly known as the Brick. Wonderful. Uh, John Arook, based on the Fiat. Yes. Scimitar, beautiful car, Ford Granada engine and drivetrain. Interesting. George Raffin, lovely to have you with us, Dinky Doo. And the Vauxhall Viva, the Forenza was the sporty Viva, yes. You have some knowledge, Scotty, encyclopedic. Well, Julie Shaw, it's my job. Remember, I was on the radio educating, informing, and entertaining you lot when there was no search engines. There was no internet. So we couldn't do that. Nobody could look anything up. So I had to do it all off the top of the head. Opal Senator 2, Scotty, yeah, the Senator Jeff Bernstein. Uh, definitely the Polis had them. Did you ever make a bogey out of old tram wheels? Yes, I did. Ramp Hill, I think I've still got the pictures. 2.3 Forenza. It's a Viva Coupe. I remember two star, four star, but never three star. Now, I don't think there was ever three star. Was the five star? I was just going to check that one. Open Fruits. Opal Fruits. You're calling me out, Scotty, on the Pope, His Holiness, as we know him, and you have seen my posts. I haven't, Michael Paul McVeigh. It's a good time, Scotty. Sadly, for some reason, I can't see anyone else's comments. Swipe to the side, Julie, and they're probably there. What radio stations are Rossworth? Nation Radio Scotland, 96.3 in the FM, or www.nationradio.scot. Motoring, fantastic. Um, swipe left. Alan Hall says, yes, swipe right. No, Alan Hall. Kevin Roberts says, swipe left. And the comments will come on. Jerry Anderson's wonderful creations. I just bought the box set of UFO last week. Fantastic. Uh, swipe left. Yes, the comments says Kevin. My dad used to run Austin Cambridge, says Alan Hall. Fine, there were lots of Cambridges as well. My first car was a 1952 Austin Somerset. So there you are. Scotty, you need a station that appreciates you. And as you want more. Oh, no, nation's very good. It was a great car too. Now you pay extra for a cigarette lighter, ashtray and metallic paint. Radio's dead for me. They don't appreciate a good thing when it comes. Radio's bittered with news. Uh, blistered with news adverts and repeated songs. Rab Bruce. Uh, you an OAP yet, says Ross. No, not yet, Ross. Good bit to go. Lou Grade was also involved in the film Raise the Titanic. The car spiralled out of control and he was overheard saying it would have been cheaper lowering the Atlantic. A great character. He was a tremendous character. Uh, I had to sell as I was pregnant with my son to two-seater. Wasn't of any use anymore. The wonderful Susan Forrest is watching in Lancashire. Motoring in the 1980s was sitting in the back with your dad throwing cigarettes through the window that came back to burn you. How times have changed. I remember somebody had bought a brand new Austin, the one after the three litre. And it was a three litre. Big Austin with these kind of um, velour type seats. He was a doctor and he was a smoker and he chucked a fag out the window. His back window was open and the fag came back in and sat on the back seat. So there's a big fag bun on the velour of the back seat of this car. Now, what was it called? There was the Austin 3 litre. That this was like, and there was the 1800, but this was much later. I wonder if it was called an Austin 3 litre. And there was a Wolseley 1800 of that sort of Austin 1800 as well. I'm trying to think what this big one was. No, I'll tell you what it was. It was an Austin 2200. 
So there you are. It was uh, it was BMC. Cars are part of our... Well, no, it wasn't. It was British Leyland. Cars are part of our heritage. Nice to have a wee trip down memory lane. I need to go, guys. See your viewers when you were at Scott FM. Whether yours are just to... Your views. Whether yours are just to create controversy. Um, well, they were for discussion purposes, Julie. You're a class act, big man. Take care, dinky doo rab. So are you. Stuart Holton, I'm swiping, but nothing in the iPad. It's old and slow. Austin Princess, the wedge shape. Yes. Why are you not on Nation Road now? Me and my wife miss you on a Saturday night. We're on on a Sunday. Now, Alistair King, was that not the Austin Healy? Ah, no, the 3000. That was uh, that was a fabulous car. Now, I could have got, I mean, they, they collect many, many thousands now. I could have got a very good black and red Austin Healey with a new engine for £150. But I didn't have the money. Um, got to head off, Scotty. Look forward to hearing you on radio on Sunday night. Good night. God bless you, Mickey. Nation Radio, sorry. El Salvador, thanks for the pop-up, Scotty. Night night, my darling. Mwah. And to every single one of you, take great care of your dear selves and dinky-doo.